Hello, it is Monday right after work and I'm not really sure what I want to do yet, but I have my sandwich here. It's got like roast beef, peppers, tomatoes, cucumbers, spinach in here. And I have been having these um, almost every dinner for the past week and a half and I'm really liking them. Plus they don't take that long to prepare and I find that I'm usually pretty pretty full for a while afterwards so that's good anything that keeps me not hungry is always good for me <clears throat> something I have been thinking about is when I go to TI I originally was planning on buying another plastic crate and sending it to the owner of the Airbnb so they can kind of like so they can hold it for me right before I arrive and then I can use that and then after that I'm not really sure what I was going to do with it. I've been a little bit intimidated in thinking about training her using a travel crate. So those are just like softer crates that like flatten that you can carry with you and I actually did end up purchasing one. I checked the dimensions just to make sure that they're very similar to her existing plastic crate but I'm kind of wondering like how she'll take to this softer crate because even though in a sense it does the same purpose, I still feel like it will take the dog a little bit of time to become accustomed to it because I don't know, the smell might be different, the feel is different, the appearance is a little different so maybe it will be um, something that she will have to adjust to or maybe she'll just be like perfect just going in. but. I'm not exactly sure how I plan on training her on this yet because I think ideally I would want to be putting her in this when I go to work just so she's used to it here and then that way when we go to Vancouver and I bring this with me even though the room that she's in will look different the crate that she's in will still have that similar feel so maybe I'll use it here or there leading up to the event. I mean, it's not the crate that I want to be using at home. I would only be using it so she becomes familiar with it and so she behaves the same way in this soft crate compared to her existing crate that she has been in for like the past year or longer. So um, I still often think about my trip. I think today is less than 100 days until the event so i'm super excited about that i think it's like 97 days that's still quite a long time until the actual event is starting so i still have time to worry about other stuff before i have to become really focused and make sure i have all my pet stuff in order i will have to take her to the vet one more time i mean i don't have to but i think i would like to maybe a week or two before flying, just so I have a health certificate saying that she's healthy. Uh, I think that would help to have. I don't think it's necessary to have because I've checked all the different regulations and at least for my airline, I'm pretty sure that I have all the proper documentation to fly with her. But it's always so scary. And I'm gonna be doing this by myself. So that's even more intimidating, but yeah, I think it should be okay. <laughs> Hi, so I actually haven't recorded while driving in a while, but it's mainly because I never bought a camera mount for my car. So this time I'm deciding to anchor it to the side using like the side frame to kind of have two sides where it's being held down. So hopefully it doesn't move as much because Usually when I'm driving, it does tend to shift around, especially if I'm going at faster speeds. But um, hopefully the highway noise isn't too loud. But I literally just finished my workout and now I'm on the way home to Rylai. Just to let her out to pee. I'm definitely really hungry after that workout. Uh, that workout wasn't super bad compared to that one day with the rope slams, that was definitely one of the worst personal training sessions. And when I say the worst, I mean it more like, you know, I, uh, I wasn't thrilled about it because um, I just don't like feeling crappy from working out. And I mean crappy in the sense of just exhaustion. I understand that 
uh, if you want results, then we'll be working hard and putting strain on your body. And I have just never been very good about getting to that point on my own. That's why I pay for personal training. Um, and the funny thing is like, I used to look forward to personal training because of the uh, physical aspect, fitness and health benefits. But I think lately after that one day, I've been like kind of nervous about it because of what we'll end up doing that day. Morning, it is Wednesday. I need to double check that. I'm pretty sure it's Wednesday, but um, ah, morning before going into work, I, I decided I'm just gonna take Friday off, so tomorrow is my last work day, so I have two more work days and then a four day weekend, which I'm really looking forward to. Um, Dota game started last night, and they're still continuing on this morning until past like 1 p.m., so that's gonna suck. I'm gonna be very like, I'm gonna be squirming a lot at work because I can't watch. Um, Newbie play an elimination match today, which I think they play around one o'clock, so I might try to coordinate my lunch so I can be home and watch like one full match or something. Um, BP did not lose any games yet, which is kind of expected, and that's great that they're performing so well. Um, I think maybe tonight, if I look at the schedule and I see that BP is playing uh, a match this evening, I'm definitely going to wake up for it because you know what? Usually if I have like one more day of work, I don't care if I'm tired for it. So Dota is on and I want to watch. So I will sacrifice and I will try to sleep right when I get home and then wake up for it. Um, it's been so crappy around here lately. Uh, sometimes there's sunlight, sometimes, and my arm's getting tired. But it's been hovering around 60s, under 70 for over a week now, and um, cloudy most of the time. So sometimes that's still hard for me to really adjust to. Uh, if I don't see sunlight, I'm like, man, this walk is gonna suck. But this morning, when I took her out, it's actually not that bad. You know, if I wear this, I have like a, I don't know, zip up under this as well. I'm not all that cold, and it adds, it ends up feeling like a nice, cool morning walk. So um, I just have to stop worrying about the sun so much. I tend to a lot, even after I've moved here for over a year. I'm still like, no sun, what's going on? And then I'm like, man, this day sucks. And then it might affect me emotionally a little bit, but obviously not enough to like derail me. Hello. Friday lunch break right now, and it is looking gloomy outside. I mean, I was just outside just to let her pee and it felt decent, but I got my um, portable crate or my travel crate. And ever since I got it, I haven't, I only got it for like one to two days, but I've been really curious to see her go in there. So I wanted to spend this lunch break opening it up and just seeing whether she would associate the crate command with going inside. So I'm going to open this up. Hey puppers. Hi you. Okay, come on. Good. Good. Good girl. Good girl, very good. Thank you. 
Good girl. So I know it is still relatively early, um, a little bit under three months before I'm going to TI, but after introducing her to the crate this afternoon, I figured it would be a good idea to get started on semi-regular use of this one leading up to the event. So what I was thinking of doing was I would just like switch in and out perhaps, uh, have her use both crates leading up to the event. Um, I could probably put her in this as well when I leave for work. It's just that since it's the weekend, I want her to at least get used to sleeping in it and then just get used to it like it's her regular one. So it's definitely, ah, there's definitely more space than I prefer, but I don't really think that should be an issue for her. I mean, like, she's freaking 2.5 years old. If she's gonna piss or poop in there, then I would be extremely disappointed just because of extra space. Okay, come on puppers. Great, good. Good, mm, I guess it's nice and spacious for her. All right, I'm going to sleep now. It's like 1 a.m. and um, there is more Dota today, but Virtus Pro is not playing. It's kind of matches I don't care as much about, so I'll probably just wake up and put them on and start my four-day weekend. Hopefully do some fun stuff, not stay in the whole time. I've been playing Path of Exile, like, all night. So, have a good night. Okay, so since Aegon is still being extremely not pleasant with his feeding sessions, um, just being extremely bratty, freaking out, whining, barking, all of that when Shane is trying to give him food, um, especially if it's far away from him, he just freaks out, he wants it. Um, I'm going to head over, hopefully for a quick session. I don't really feel like being out for too long today. It's my day off, I kind of want to just do stuff I enjoy instead of um, like spend too much time on dog training. So I will go see if I can help him out. Uh, I am very curious, I guess, to see whether Aegon actually reacts to higher levels because I told Shane to go higher on his remote since if he's freaking out, he won't feel a low one. He needs to go higher and really, really disagree with the way he's acting. So going to head out now and hopefully um, I'll be able to do something that will be helpful, provide some insight. <laughs> Do you think he's at least improving in terms of like not persistent freak out? But I mean, right there was worse, but in the kitchen it was better. And the, first, yeah, the first one off was okay. And I think mm -hmm. what, I honestly think what happened is he wasn't entirely sure about the food and then he went in there and saw that it was right there. And then the mm -hmm. second time he was like, mm -hmm. that's all they want was to get the food. True, because he knew it was there. Yeah, like I think he had an idea it might be there, but it wasn't until he smelled it that he like really saw it. Hello, I just got back from Shane's house and today's training was uh, enlightening, I guess. Uh, so 
the contact points that I lent to him, the long haired, thick furred contact points were not working very well for him. Like Aegon was twitching at like an 80, which should not be happening. 80 should be a level where it should be very bothersome for them and not mere twitches. So we shaved a little bit of his hair down and we tried the one that I used for Rylai, the short haired comfort pads. And it was definitely working better and as intended. So I told him to order one for himself because I use these for Rylai, he can't keep them. <laughs> but um, we did some place practice because he is having a lot of issues with food. He has a lot of energy, he's very bratty, he's barking and whining coming off of place when there's food involved. So we did a lot of practice where I think the most important thing that I wanted to do today was making sure that Egon understands that when he's on place, his head needs to be down. We kind of gave him the idea that that was expected of him by kind of just like anytime he lifted his head, just push his head back down. And after a while we started adding in corrections for that. I had like Shane doing everything that he usually does that provokes Aegon, like going to the kitchen, all the clinking sounds that comes from the kitchen, uh, bringing out the food, putting out the food, walking around, playing with treats, just every single possible distraction that could get him uh, to break the head down position. He would do that and then we would correct and then after enough corrections of that, he started to really chill out. He would just like, you would see the change in him because he would see something that would normally make him raise his head and he would maybe move a tiny bit, but then he would think about it for like a split second and lower his head again. So his head would not come up enough to warrant a correction, but you could just tell that they are very focused on keeping their head down because they know the consequence of lifting their head. So once we did that enough times and once uh, he was very good at keeping his head down, I started like kind of baiting him a little bit. I like went to play with the food. I grabbed it, brought it over, walked around with it, just like made noise with it just to test him a little bit. And he was very good. He didn't really break anything. So I do think that that is a very important process that Shane needs to uh, continue practicing because just anything involving food, I want to make sure and I want him to understand that Aegon's behavior can never be like rushed, it can't be bratty, can't be any of that. It has to be calm 100%. So we went through with place, making sure that when he got off place, he is still calm. If he rushes off crate, if he rushes off place, if he rushes off and then like pulls on the leash, that's correction, put him back on place and repeat, repeat, repeat until he does not rush off place. And then after that, I had Shane practice walking around his house because um, usually when he gets near the kitchen area or near where he feeds Aegon, Aegon starts to pull ahead and pull on the leash and we're, it gets to the point where he's like pulling Shane along. So that's another thing that I think is definitely something to work on. I had him walk around the house several times and anytime Aegon would speed up and rush, I would have him pop the collar back and then correct simultaneously. So pretty much two corrections and enough to deter him from doing that and it's something that he should definitely just like focus on in general any behavior where they're rushing they're rushing they're being pushy that's stuff to correct for because um it's a state of mind thing and if they're rushing and like really trying to get something immediately that's not good <laughs> and I know I say the word calm a lot, but I really do think that that's just the easiest word to associate with all of this because if you're calm, if you as a human are calm, right? You are able to make better choices. You're able to think through your actions and the consequences and like even in an argument, right? If you're worked up and you're angry, you don't always say the best things. You don't always um, just think properly. You don't put yourself in the other person's shoes. So usually after you had time to calm down, then you are able to make rational choices. So even though the dog's not angry, it's still a very um, good way to compare because they make better choices when they're calm, which is why that is a mindset you want your dog to embody every 
hour, every second of every day. Today's actually a nice day. Um, I was considering writing, but I think for today, since I just went to Shane's for like two hours, close to three, um, I wanna just stay home and enjoy myself. At most, I'll walk Riley one more time outside, but maybe I'll take a ride tomorrow. I do think tomorrow will be a nice day. So um, there will be Dota to watch tonight as well at like three to 6 a.m., somewhere in that range, which I will probably definitely wake up for because VP will be playing. And it's semifinals, so there's just two more days of this event. That's what's going on with me, not much else otherwise.